thank you. Uh, as Professor said, I'm Enrico Cardillo. I'm a graduate from University of Bologna. And I'm very glad to be here because I found very interesting all the presentation that have been placed so far. And also because I'm very thankful to Professor Azegna that gave me a lot of advices in the early stage of this, of this um, final dissertation. My thesis um, was conceived into two main parts. The first half was uh, about to um, explain what is BIM and how do we apply BIM to existing building, while the second part that will be, um, will be focused on this uh, presentation was about the historical analysis of the fortress and the e-BIM modeling of the, um, of the North Tower of this fortress using Autodesk Revit. The framework of the thesis was the InBeam project. It is a, um, a project that is both from universities of Emilia Romagna, where I come from, and other private partners, and is about to create and validate protocols for BIM using a, a BIM approach for existing buildings. Uh, what we tried to do with this thesis was to create a model that had a geometry as close as we can as close as we can get to the real one. So we had this um, structural purposes of uh, making a direct export and import uh, geometry with FEM softwares. But another um, framework was the Inception project that is a European Union founded project that um, is trying to create a database of uh, 3D models in which we could of which we could reconstruct the, their histories. So we were asked to not only create a um, simple model, but to reproduce some of the phases of construction of the, of the model itself. So our main tasks were to create a semantic model and also to work on the interoperability part of this. So we we, we use the IFC um, file to import and export information from Revit to other softwares. The reason why we choose San Felice sul Panaro Fortress is because um, it has a very long history since it spans over 1000 years, as you can see. And also because uh, this evolution took place in different time uh, times so the the shape of the fortress and the north tower it's not so common and easy to be reproduced but also because in in the um, emilia um, earthquake that took place in june 2012 it was uh, heavily damaged by two very um, strong uh, hit that took place so close one with respect to the other that there was no time to secure the damaged parts. So uh, during the second earthquake, parts of the, of the corner of the North Tower collapsed. So this added a very uh, difficult um, task to our modeling. With regard to the approach that we had to follow, uh, first we had to choose whether to use scan to beam or CAD to beam. And as you can see from the photos, it was quite easy to choose because there was a um, building site uh, going on, so we could not use at all the uh, terrestrial laser scanner. So we had to look for uh, plants or digital works about the, the tower and the fortress. And we were quite lucky because we could find some phases of the latter mm, stages of the building. So we found some surveys in 1985, uh, a restoration plans and cross section of the 90s. And then we got the post seismic situation from some auto images that we, we got from the, from the, um, the, the, the municipality. Uh, to, to model the, the building, and uh, we, we choose to focus on the tower because it was the, the portion of the building itself that had many peculiarities. Uh, as you can see here, for instance, there is this uh, narrow window or 
also because it had some features that uh, could be seen in the whole in the whole building, like the brackets or the merlons. And the first thing that we did was to vectorize the plants and to look for some some indicators that could help us to uh, to stack one plan over the other. So we found this reference line here in uh, the uh, northeast tower that helped us to stack all the, the plans together. And once we did this in AutoCAD, we were able to export it on, um, on Revit. And when we imported in Revit, we used this um, um, the, the DWG file in order to model the walls. And uh, the walls were modeled as in planes components because one of the features that these walls had, it was that the inner part was straight while the exterior face was sloped. So the cross section was uh, changing from the bottom to the top and to be compliant with this, we use the blend feature to create these locked walls. Then we also had uh, different materials. So the core was made of masonry, but the inner part was made of plaster. So to reproduce this in the, in the walls, we used the, the divide parts feature. And as you can see, this is uh, uh, two examples of cross-section, horizontal and vertical, that shows you the, the thickness of the wall that is changing with regards to the height. Then after we um, focused on the, as it was, shape of the tower, we went through the post-seismic situation. And since we, we didn't have any plans of that at the beginning of our work, we, uh, we imported within Revit the ortho images that were created for the restoration. And we used these ortho images to create some volumes that had been subtracted to the walls that we created in the earlier phases. So we could reproduce the collapsed portion. We could uh, measure the amount of masonry that was lost with the with the earthwork, for instance, and we had this, for instance, this feature of scarification of the of the wall. Then we also create a vocabulary of objects that were common in all the buildings. So, for instance, we created a Merlon that was all parametric. It had all parametric dimension, so we could use this in the whole building and. Think of the fact that in the tower itself, we had 12 Merlons and each one of them had um, very different um, length or width with respect to the other. So we also use this parametric dimension to create this very narrow window here to, to place it um, in the correct position. Uh, with respect to the, um, the sides of the Merlin itself, or also for the windows, because all the windows had a common shape, but different dimensions. We also experienced the adaptive families to create the actual shape of the vaults, because we had uh, three vaults, they were all different. So we created this uh, kill vaults using adaptive points to place them uh, in the correct position uh, with respect to the, to the wall and with the dimension that could be modified in the, um, in the family types editing. The last part of the modeling was, um, was about patchings. This was one of the suggestions that Professor Azenia gave to us at the beginning. And we created these adaptive patches that had a set number of points that could be placed in the position that we needed to on the, on the walls. Uh, this, uh, uh, we had a mechanical characterization of the masonry information within this, um, these patches because our purpose was a structural purpose. 
So for each wall that would have been uh, exported using IFC, we needed to know its density or masonry quality index for further um, checks on FEM software. So after that, I will, um, I will show you some of the issues that we had. This one was actually very critical because at the end of the modeling, we, we noticed that when we were exporting IFC uh, models of the building, uh, we had the window pane and the framework of each window that we created, but we could not export the void. So this was a huge problem for our modeling. And uh, we uh, took contact with um, the Autodesk uh, help desk and uh, they also told us that there was no way to export this kind of feature. Even before conducting them, we tried to modify the IFC elements um, information, but we couldn't do. So as a solution, we decided to cut the in-place model in the, in the position that the windows should have taken place and substitute this part uh, cut with a classic wall that would have the same cross-section of the part that was, uh, was taken off. And as you can see, we were able to export using IFC all the voids that in the previous part were not uh, visible. Another issue that we had, the last one, was that during the earthquake, the, the tower was subjected to a torque. So uh, starting from the before, uh, the after, the before earthquake uh, situation, we could not represent this torque. And this is visible because we, at the, at the end of the, of the work, we were able to find this um, model that um, is a geometry of the state of the fact of the, um, of the tower nowadays. So we, we noticed that there are some differences, but in the end, we were very happy with the results because we could comply with the request of both EBM framework and also from the, uh, the other project, the inception project. Um, thank you very much. If you have any question, please ask, feel free to ask.